Hi everybody, this is Leaf with Adaptable Wealth, where we reject the view of wealth that focuses only on money and material possessions. Instead, we define it as a sound, healthy, and prosperous state. This is the second video in a two-part series where I give you 30 ways to protect against inflation. While the first part focuses primarily on income generation and protecting and growing your assets, this video will go through 15 ways you can save money by finding discounts or changing your spending behavior. Let's kick it off. The first way to protect yourself from inflation is through employee discounts. You'll be surprised at the discounts that companies have for their employees. I get a 20% discount on my cell phone bill and they have discounts on movie and theme park tickets, travel, and technology to name a few. Check with your HR department or on the company intranet to see how your employer can help protect you from inflation. The second way to protect against inflation is to stock up. First it was the pandemic. Since then it's been the supply chain issues. Now there are rumblings of price controls which always lead to shortages. If you haven't realized that everyone should be storing food, water, and other necessities, I don't know what to say. Everyone, and I mean everyone, should have at least a couple of months of such items stored. To lower costs, you can buy in bulk. Just to point out the obvious though, you need to stock up before you need to rely on the supplies. The third way to protect yourself from inflation is to cook at home. The cost of food is going up, so the cost of making your own food will go up as well. But we all know that it's more expensive to eat out. Not only do restaurants have to cover the rising cost of food, but they also need to make a profit for their efforts. As a result, you're going to pay a markup on top of the higher cost of food. Markups are based on target profit margins, which are percentages of the price. As the price goes up, the dollar amount of the markup increases even if the profit margin is held constant. Another reason to cook at home is you develop a marketable skill. It could help you out in the future should you lose your job or find yourself in a position where you have to make some money anyway. Lastly, it's healthier to eat at home. You'll tend to use higher quality food and less salt and sugar than a restaurant will. As I point out later in this article, being healthy has one of the best ROIs on this list. The fourth way to protect yourself from inflation is to grow some of your own food. I think this is going to be important in the coming decade as we work through the current disruptions as well as the proposed changes around energy and food consumption. There are several reasons we should all be growing some of our own food. First, you will at least have something to keep you alive should severe food shortages pop up. Second, there are proven health benefits to eating very fresh foods which haven't been sprayed with massive amounts of pesticides and fungicides. Third, there is growing evidence that gardening can reduce stress and promote healthier eating, higher life satisfaction, higher cognitive function, and decreased severity of depression. In my opinion, if there is one thing to grow that would be most productive, it would be keeping chickens. They are not too much work and eggs are one of the most nutritious foods we can eat not to mention the chicken meat that comes with it. The fifth way to protect yourself from inflation is to cooperate with your neighbors and community. Working with those in and around your local community provides significant benefits, not only in the sense that you'll have a layer of support should times get tough, but you can negotiate lower prices for some services that many people in your community also use. The most obvious examples are gardening and house cleaning. It shouldn't be too hard to find a provider that will do the work for several houses at a 10, 15, or even 20% discount. They also benefit because they will be gaining many new customers. The sixth way to protect against inflation is to be healthy. Eat healthy, exercise, sleep well, improve your 10 components of total health. I covered the 10 components of health in an article on my website, adaptablewealth.com. You can check it out by clicking on the link above or in the description below. Voiding healthcare costs has one of the highest ROIs on this entire list. One study estimated the per capita lifetime expenditure on healthcare to be $316,000 with the following distribution across age. This means you are currently expected to spend $153,000 after you reach age 65. Assuming you're 35 right now and with an average annual inflation rate of 3.5%, you are expected to spend $417,000 on healthcare expenses after you hit 65. That's insane, and one massive financial reason to be as healthy as you reasonably can. The seventh way to protect yourself from inflation is to ditch the gym. I just said to be healthy, but I want you to get rid of your gym membership. Yes, I do. Do not hear what I'm not saying though. I am not saying to stop exercising. Instead, I'm saying move away from exercising in a box with no exposure to fresh air, sunshine, or the energy of the world. In other words, we should all be exercising outside. 
you can do weights at home and then go for a run, stop at the park and do pull-ups on the monkey bars, find stairs to run up and down, do lunges across the whole park. The possibilities are endless. Our world, our body, and the fact that gravity creates a force we can push against makes the world our gym. We do not need weights and we certainly do not need the gym. Not only will you eliminate an expense from your budget, you'll get in better shape, you'll build better functional strength, you'll also get fresh air, exposure to the sun, and a better feel for your community. The eighth way to protect against inflation is to substitute. If the goods and services that you usually consume go up in price, it's worth considering some alternatives. For example, if you eat a lot of meat and pork, which have gone up over 15% over the past year, according to the CPLI, you can switch to eating more chicken or seafood, which have gone up by about as half as much. One thing that I'm not hearing anyone talk about in regards to protecting your pocketbook from inflation is the fact that fresh vegetables has gone up by only 2.4%. Let me repeat that, 2.4%. If you want an easy way to combat inflation, then make fresh vegetables a larger part of your diet. Not only will you save money now, you will reduce the need for health care later in life if you make fresh vegetables a large part of your diet forever. It's a win-win situation. The ninth way to protect against inflation is to stop buying highly processed and prepackaged foods. Each time a company processes or transforms a product, they incur a cost. A profit-seeking entity adds a markup based on a percentage of the cost. Because of this, highly processed and packaged foods cost a lot more per unit of nutrition and for the same quality than a unprocessed or minimally processed food does. And we'll see exactly this playing out in the CPI figures. This goes back to one of the points in the last item. One of the most effective ways of combating inflation right now is to eat more fresh vegetables. To can green beans, for example, you need the cans and you need the machines to fill the cans. The consumer is going to pay all of the costs associated with bringing the fresh beans to market, plus the cost of the machines, the cans, and the markup. You'll get more nutritionally dense food on top of saving money. It's a no-brainer. The tenth way to protect against inflation is to buy in bulk and in large quantities during sales. This one is self-explanatory. The 11th way to protect against inflation is to pay attention to what is called shrinkflation, a common way companies sneak through price increases by reducing the quantity while keeping the price the same. This is called shrinkflation. The sticker price doesn't change, but the price per unit of product goes up. This is usually the first strategy of companies because so many consumers won't realize it's happening right away. My most recent experience with this was with shredded cheese I buy. The price remained at $4.99 per package, but they reduced the content from 8 ounces to 7.5 ounces. This may not seem like much, but it equates to a 6.67% increase in the price per ounce of cheese. A newly redesigned package is one clue that shrinkflation has happened. They're trying to conceal their shenanigans. If a brand that I buy pulls this crap, I will always move to another brand if I can. I hate companies that try to hide price increases. I will favor transparent companies who raise their sticker price. The twelfth way to protect against inflation is to change brands. Stop paying $1,200 for the new iPhone or anything else that you can get for hundreds or thousands of dollars cheaper if not for the brand. Brand loyalty is a loser's game unless their products are so much better than others or you're getting a significant discount. Trust me, life will be okay driving a Toyota Camry or a Kia Optima versus a BMW or a Mercedes and you'll save thousands of dollars over the life of the car. The thirteenth way to protect against inflation is to buy reusable rather than disposable. You save money while also helping the environment. The best example of how this can save you money is rechargeable batteries. You pay a little more now, but each battery can be recharged 10 to 20 times, helping you save over the long run. Better yet, buy solar lamps and flashlights instead of ones that use batteries. Of course, you want to have a couple that do use batteries as backup. Other examples include buying water filters instead of buying water bottles, using cloth divers for your baby instead of disposable ones, buying washable glass or plastic containers to carry food rather than sandwich baggies, and a plastic Christmas tree instead of buying a fresh one every year. You get the idea. The 14th way to protect against inflation is to do it yourself. Instead of paying others to handle things for you, do it yourself. Wash your own car, cook at home, take the kids to the park or on a hike instead of going to the theme park, stay in for a movie, make drinks at home and invite friends rather than go into the bar. If gas prices are high, walk or ride a bike more often, make your own coffee instead of buying out, etc. The 15th and final way to protect against inflation is to review and revise your budget. 
having already thought through your finances over the next 12 months leaves you ahead of the curve when needing to pivot or adjust your spending habits. You know what is most important to you and what your goals are so you can adjust spending on the other less important areas. If you're looking for a budget model that makes things easy, try out the one I provide for free at adaptablewealth.com. You can find the link at the top of the screen or in the description below. All you do is fill out your expense details on the control tab and the budget tab populates automatically. You'll have to manually input actuals and net worth, but once complete, the dashboard tab will be ready to use. The best part about this model is that it is completely yours. Nobody will be collecting your financial data with the purpose of advertising to you or selling you financial services. And there you have it, 15 ways to protect against inflation. There are several actions on this list that everyone can take. I suggest finding your sweet spot between the benefit and the time needed to accomplish. Once you've found the ones that work best for you, start immediately. Rising prices affect us all and they don't wait for anyone. You're either actively working to protect against inflation or inflation is literally picking your pocket. Your time and your energy are being stolen from you. The good thing is, is you can take it back or at least some of it. If you want 15 more ways to protect against inflation, please check out the second part of this video by clicking on the thumbnail on your screen. And please don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, you all take care and remember, wealth is not only about money and things. Your time and health are just as important and working to improve all three pillars of wealth is key to being adaptable, resilient, and thriving in life.